Coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, our compost has arrived and we'll take a look at some methods to keep small four-legged critters out of your vegetable garden. Today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored in part by for all your non-GMO organic and heirloom vegetable, flowers, and herb seeds, visit dollarseed.com. Sioux Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil, retains moisture and adds nutrients, which equals less water. Available in labor saver, pre-filled trays and pots, bag and bulk. Visit SueCompost.com. Organic fertilizer for the health conscious organic home gardener. Family owned and operated. Visit WGardens.com. Don't poison your soil with municipal water. Attach a body, mind, and soil hose filter. Free shipping exclusively through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Just click on the body, mind, and soil icon. Authentic Haven brand soil conditioner for the home gardener. Easy to brew. Visit ManureTea.com. No measuring, no thinking. Stamp it, plant it, stop plotting, start planting. GardenStamp.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. I'm Holly Baird. And today we are talking about leaf compost. This is certified leaf compost from Sioux Growing Supply. And it's special because it's made from 100% leaves. Now, you can buy compost, you can buy organic compost, but you have a lot of problems with weed seeds. And you don't get that with this. It's really nice, rich black gold. And it's recommended to top dress it every year. You top dress your, your beds or your garden or whatever to add those nutrients. It's got a lot of good nutrients in it. You want to do about an eighth of an inch to half of an inch every year. So we're going to put this on our berms. Yeah, so it's, it's really nice. You can purchase it at your local independent garden center. And if you want to know how much compost you're going to need, you can go to SueCompost.com and they have a compost calculator there. Mm -hmm. And you can find that link through our website, which is the same name as our show, the Wisconsin Vegetable And you can find out where you can purchase certified leaf compost and do all your calculations and get your garden to grow better than it ever has before. So I'm going to go take some, start layering or figure out where this goes. All right. Now, some advantages to having leaf compost, as I had mentioned before, is you don't have to worry about weed seeds. And that happens a lot if you get organic compost from like your city yard or from some other source. Another thing is it's, it's not comparable to cow manure because you don't have to worry about where those cows are fed from, whether it's something like GMO corn or some other harmful sort of thing that could get into the cow manure. And you have to worry about burning your plants from the manure. So it's got a lot of great benefits. That's why we prefer the leaf compost over anything else. Now it is recommended to till this into your soil so that it, since it's a good additive for your soil, we're actually putting it on the top of our berms and then it's going to kind of work its way in. We're going to kind of spade it in or fork it in so that it is worked into the soil and that will help keep the weeds down and help add nutrients back into our soil. This compost is just full, packed full of beneficial bacteria, and it's also great because it doesn't have a foul odor like cow manure. There's really no odor to it. Also, it holds moisture really well, but it also allows for proper drainage. So I know personally, we've worked with a lot of different types of compost and growing mediums, and this is the best that we've ever worked with by far. When it comes to protecting your vegetables from varmints or animals, fencing is the only way you can do this. Now you can set up live traps, but we have a number of different methods that we protect our vegetables. Last year we went and did nothing, and we really got behind because every time we'd plant something and they'd become be, start to emerge, 
rabbits or squirrels or whatever it was, something was eating them. We later found out it was rabbits. So we invested in some one inch hexagon chicken wire, a poultry wire or poultry netting based on the terminology you're familiar with. We used it around a large portion of the garden and it worked very well. Now we've expanded the garden a little larger this year and we're using a number of different other items to assist with the chicken wire or poultry wire to protect the garden from rabbits. One is this hexagon plastic fencing that we had found. It was it's very beneficial. We've got uh, 15 foot of it. So we extended it over on this side. It works very well. The, the concept of keeping the rabbits out is at least 12, 18 inches high. Now, typically rabbits are smart animals and they won't jump into something that they know they can't get out of. So that was the concept here. We put it up and we've placed it on the ground pinched it down with logs or blocks, rocks, whatever we had available, just so the rabbits don't sneak underneath. Another option that we have is window or a fa box fan grates. When it comes to box fans, we used to find a lot of them and we recycled them for extra money, but we could and didn't know quite what to do with the actual plastic portion. So we cut them in half and put them together and it actually adds about uh, 12 to 14 inches of height there. And we fence them and we'll have to do some modification here. But we put them vertical and the rabbits don't jump over. Now, single height, they will jump over, but too high there, they won't. So, you know, that's something that you may not have readily available, but it is something to do with a couple of extra fan grates that you might have on a fan that's broken. Let's go out to the first garden, new gardener garden, and take a look at what some of the options that we have that Holly's working on to protect that garden as we go through this summer in that series. Now we have the fan grates against our wire fence here separating the front yard from the backyard because there was some areas where rabbits were sneaking in walking through our strawberry patch and then getting into the garden where we had already previously fenced. So we used that as a deterrent and it's worked very well and it's just something to slow the rabbits down because this chain link fence the hexagons are wide enough that most rabbits are able to come through and go out as they're at their leisure. So that's why we kind of slotted those there to protect the rabbits or protect our vegetables from the rabbits. We'll still have to add some over here. Now on the first garden, new gardener bed here, we have this plastic fencing that I think we found or somebody bought or something like that. And it will work. We'll strap it up very nicely in this 21 square foot bed and that'll protect the the vegetables from rabbits and other critters and the rabbits are the main culprit that we have around here now there's people that have problems with deers and other animals that's something you're gonna have to do research on we don't have that issue so we don't really work at detouring those in our garden so just one thing you want to keep in mind with whatever fencing you're purchasing is the size of the holes in the fence know the size of the what size the rabbit is and know how small of an area that the rabbits can go through just like i spoke about the chain link fence that they can go through that two inch gap there very easily in most cases especially the smaller smaller rabbits so just something to keep in mind so the hard work and effort that you put into your vegetable garden you can reap the rewards instead of having continually fight with critters getting the vegetables before you do I'm Joy Baird. Thanks for watching. Join us again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. This has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit the